The following sermon is presented by Southside Bible Church in Centennial, Colorado. We hope you'll be strengthened and encouraged by God's Word today as you listen. Father, we begin by we want to thank you. We started 2018 and we ask that you would bless us as a body. Lord, we have felt your power. We have observed it and we've watched you working in our midst. I thank you for the way there's so many growing in their love for Jesus Christ. They're growing in a heart for your kingdom and how to advance it and how to engage and build into each other's lives. God, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you uh, for the global mindset that is growing in our hearts and affections. God, I, pr- I just thank you that you met us and as we, we did sing, that you have held us fast. I've seen some very hard, difficult trials that have been laid on the sons and daughters of God. And Father, do, do you treat your children this way? And your word says, yes, if you don't, we're illegitimate children. And I thank you that you've held them fast. You have deepened faith. You have grown it. Lord, you have purified it and purged it in trial and fire. And we thank you that your very promise that you would hold us fast and you would only put us in trials and fires for the perfect amount of time, for the perfect amount of purging for that trial. And we thank you for how specific and how you have loved us and purifying our hope to be only in you and the coming grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, thank you. Thank you for the way you've met us in a million different ways. God, I thank you now as we turn the page to another year. Lord, I do. I pray for our faithfulness to our God. I pray that you would continue to deepen and grow our love, faith, and hope. God, I pray that that you would meet us in a beautiful way this year. God, we desire for all the nations, Lord, people to come into your kingdom and that those who sit here this morning who know you would be deepened and be more conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, I pray now for what we will look at in this word. Would you do what no man can do? Would you, by your spirit, come now and enlighten every mind to the truth? Let no mind not understand this passage And let every affection then be stirred to their God, to be stirred to the King of Kings. And I pray, Lord, that every will then would be engaged and activated to say, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. God, let that be the fruit of what you do here this morning as we open up this word. And so, God, do what only you can do. We pray for your glory that by the time we finish this morning, You're put on display and everyone is looking and marveling and loving uh, their God. So we pray for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I read something last week. There were 1,500 people who were interviewed over the age of 65. I can't tell you which ones were believers or not. I just know it was a secular interview. And they asked them, what would you do different uh, if you could relive your life? And they had eight answers. The first one is they said, not being careful enough when choosing a life partner. I wish I would have gave it more thought and didn't just jump into it carelessly. Second, they said, not resolving a conflict with family, just letting some of these divisions stay and pride, keeping you from solving them and healing them and repenting and doing the things necessary. They, they wish they would have resolved these conflicts now as they're ending their lives. They said, thirdly, putting off saying how you feel. Instead of waiting for your funeral to tell you what I think about you, they said, I would have shared more in the journey of what you meant to me. Fourthly, they said, I would have traveled more. They said, I would rather have skipped remodeling my kitchen and went and did something before I was so old. When I travel now, I can't do it. It's hard to walk around these places. So they they said, I would have traveled more in the journey. Again, this is secular. Fifthly, spending too much time worrying. I, I, I just worried about so many things that my life was just preoccupied and consumed with worry. Sixthly, not being honest living in guilt and hiding things and not coming out and being clean with them. Number seven, not taking career chances with opportunities that came and playing it too close to the vest. And and number eight, they said not taking care of your body, that that now in in my older years, I wish I would have cared for it more 
uh, in these days? Well, as I pondered some of those, some of them have some good wisdom and some good thought, but I would like to give you my top eight this morning. They're very different. They're very different. But uh, I, you, you choose which one you like. I'm going to give you another list of eight, and you can go home with your commitment. But my goal this morning is that you leave with the one from Ephesians that we're about to look at. So I want to take up kind of where we left off last year. As I, as I prayed and thought about a new year, God just kept bringing back to me this Ephesians. Turn to chapter 5. I had a dear brother teach it uh, in the discipleship to the college group this year in the summer, and it just stirred my heart again saying, I, I just want to look at that. I want to give it more time and as a body keep focused on this. It, it's something we, we want to ignore, and we need someone to keep bringing it back and stick it in our face and say, consider this. And so it, it brings our minds and our hearts right to the place where they need to be as we start a new year. I care about your mindset as we engage in 2019. And so this, this morning, is the mindset as the body of Christ, corporately and individually, we need to have. Right after eating too much food and fun and fellowship and not enough discipline in the secret place, uh, we're in a vulnerable place right now and we need to turn the page. We need to navigate faithfully this new season, we need to bring Christmas to an end. And every year, I think that we should quit celebrating Christmas. And just everybody seems to the hurts get doubled. We, we, we don't take care of ourselves. And, and everyone comes in lethargic as we start the new year. So uh, I'm Scrooge, okay? Just <laughs> remind me next year when I get all excited about Christmas again that we should just skip it and just keep journeying in our disciplines. So let, let's redeem the days then that God has given to us because we, we don't know really when these days are going to end. And so I, I don't ever want to hear the words, cancer, there, there's nothing more we can do. Or heart disease, you could go any time, there's really nothing medically we can do for your heart. Or maybe you're just driving and you're hit by a semi and, the, and just gone, there's nothing more you can do on this earth. Or in our day and age, maybe you're gunned down just walking the streets with what's happening in our country. Just boom, time's over. I really wanted to do this or make this right first and you didn't get that chance. I didn't redeem the time that God had given me. And so much was, of my time was just squandered on me. I feel like i got to fight my own heart and i got to fight your heart to not spend all your time wasting it on lesser things than what we'll look at this morning. I don't want to lie on my deathbed just full of regrets and always use the word tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'll be faithful tomorrow. Tomorrow I will do what the Lord is telling me to do. Tomorrow I'm going to share the gospel with that person. Tomorrow, I'm going to finally get serious about Bible reading. Tomorrow, 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 I want to put a death to that thought. New Year's are good times to put tomorrow to now, to today, not later. Here, to, here I am, God, send me. It's not if, but it's I can do all things through him who strengthens me. From fruitlessness to fruitfulness. From just plans to fruition from talk to walk, that is my passion for myself and for this flock. The Christmas series took up my heart in a beautiful way with Christ. And I want to redeem the time that God has given to me under this sun. The days that were decreed for me to know him and to make him known. I just want to be done with lesser things. I want to be like Paul and say, one thing I do. I'm reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the call of God in Christ Jesus. One thing. And so God just keeps bringing me back to Ephesians 5 again. And so if you'll turn there to chapter 5, let me set the context. And I want to lead you to what I want to exhort you in this morning from the Word of God. I want to make the most of 2019 if God grants us a full year, which none of us have, have that promise. My brethren, time is the most precious gift. And what I'm going to share with you this morning is it must be redeemed. That the gift of time must be redeemed. Look with me in Ephesians 5.15. 
Therefore, be careful how you walk. Be careful of your day-to-day life and what you do. Be, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but walk as wise men. Verse 16, making the most of your time because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And the will of the Lord is that you're not foolish, but you're wise and you redeem the time and the days that God has given to you as a gift. The good news is I'm not going to set a detailed context that the sermon will actually do that. But I'm just going to set with you the, the big context of Ephesians and then we will move in and narrow it in. In Ephesians chapter 1 through 3, we, we pre- I preached this book for a year, so I'm not going to get too lost in it, but it, it's all indicatives which are statements of fact and they're doctrines of what God has done for us in Christ the gospel the, uh, of salvation, all that he's done. And so Ephesians 1 through 3, this is what God has done to bring you back to himself and reconcile you. Then chapter 4, 1 is the big therefore. In light of this doctrine and this truth, therefore, this is how you're to live your life. So in light of a salvation finished, you've been saved, therefore, here's how I want you to live. This whole exhortation this morning will come out of the therefore. It will come out of chapters 1 through 3. This is the key to redeeming the time. And then we move into chapters 4 through 6 that are all imperatives. They're the commands. How does God want his children to live in light of this great salvation? What God has done for you in Christ, how does he want you to live? Therefore, redeem the time. Redeem this time that God has given to you. Redeem it. Don't walk as unwise. Walk as wise. Make the most of it. Salvation is you have wisdom now, and you can think God's thoughts about your life and about this world. And so he now narrows it down, then what will this wisdom look like? What what will happen if we walk as wise men or women? In verse 16, he says, you're going to make the most of your time. If you are wise and you've been redeemed and you have a therefore in your life, you will redeem the time that God has given to you. And in verse 17, the fool will squander his time. The fool is going to live for his five senses. The fool is just all about me. It's the selfie age. That's what a fool will be like. You will take this gift of time and you'll let it run through your fingers, trying to spend as much of it on yourself as you possibly can. And you're going to come to the end of your life having been a fool. The wise one is going to redeem this gift of time on this earth that God has granted to you. So look with me in verse 16. Make the most... Uh, it has a definite article here of the time. Make the most of the time. It's not any time, it's your time. <clears throat> it's the time that has been allotted to you by God. It's the time that He has decreed from beginning to end your life on this earth. That is the time that God is talking about for you individually. And I've said this before, your life is like an hourglass with sand dripping through it. And the amount of sand in your hourglass has been predetermined by God, and that last grain may run out today. Every day, some grains of sand run through it, and you just never know when will be the last one. So redeem every grain of sand that falls through. Every day that God has given to you, Redeem it. Redeem it. Redeem this time. Listen to what Paul said in Acts 20, 24 about the time. He said, I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself in order that I may finish my course. In the Greek, it's the course of me. Here's the course of me. I just want to finish it in the ministry which I receive from the Lord to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. So I've been given a course by God and I want to finish. I want to run it well. In 2 Timothy, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I've kept the faith. I finished the life, the course that God has given and decreed for me. I've finished it. Now I get the crown of life. 
So Paul is calling us to redeem the days that God has given to each one of us. He wants us to make the most of the opportunity of the days that he has granted to you. And he draws it out even more by the word he chooses for time. There are two Greek words for time. One is chronos, where we get the word chronology, and it's, it's, it's time like a clock or a calendar. The other one that he chooses here is kairos, which means an era, an epic, or an opportunity. And so you, you have this opportunity. You have this era that God has given to you about your life. Every moment that God so graciously gives us on this earth then is a gift from Him. And it's to be redeemed as we have been redeemed. We have been brought back, people, from uselessness. Ephesians showed we we lived in uselessness. That was the, the course of our life, and God redeemed us and brought us back for usefulness to the king. And now we're, we're to take that and we're to buy back the days that God has given us and to use them for the king in, in wisdom and for his glory. So we, we wise people, we, we have ability now to, to live in wisdom and, and buy back these days that he's allotted to us. We can walk in wisdom, and that wisdom is one who makes the most of this opportunity that God has given to you. I hope you can feel and sense the opportunity, just the gift of life this morning that you've been bought back, uh, redeemed, and now you have days that have been given to you by God to be used for God. I think we play the fool with what we call time maybe more than anything. We squander it, we take it for granted. And we always, again, we think there's a tomorrow or the people of good intentions. Tomorrow I will share my faith. I'm going to live more devoted to prayer. I'm going to spend quality time finally training my children. I'm going to quit plopping in front of the TV at the end of every day and let it devour me. We just have promise after promise and resolution after resolution. And we're going to come to the end of that, not having redeemed this time that this gracious God has given to me. It's going to squander it and waste our lives. I want you to look at what Paul says this does. He says, if you will do this in verse 18, you'll be filled with the Spirit and not drunk with wine that's just dissipating and wasting your life. You're going to have hymns and spiritual songs that you'll sing to one another. You'll have marriages that glorify God and children obeying and honoring, parents not exasperating, bosses and employees, and putting on the armor and fighting the battle. This is what will happen if you are filled with the Spirit, being wise and redeeming the time that God has given to you. So we don't waste time with foolishness in our context, with sin and laziness, and excessive sleep, inordinate preparations of the physical body, vain talk, immoralities. He's going to give us a list of what it means to squander and waste the gift that God has given to us, to give all of our energies to our local sports team, all of our energies to social media. There's just too much time running through our fingers that is wasted, gone, spent, unredeemed for the one who redeemed me. It's so important that we get this. Guys, what I want you to hear this morning, this is not a call to fill up the space of your time. A busy person is not always a wise person. This isn't just a call this morning to be busy, but to be fruitful with the time that God gives to you. It's not just using the time. There are people who are busy with no time for doing good to other people. It isn't just being busy, but it's to improve the time that God has given you for the good of your own soul and the good of others. It's redeeming it for the right things. Redeem the time that has been decreed by God for you for the purpose of loving God and loving other people. Why? Verse 16, because the days are evil. 
They're evil. This age is going bad and getting worse. It's growing in it. I've never watched the, we're not evolving, we're devolving, and it's happening at a pace that's unbelievable. It's just all around us. This age is marked by darkness and sin and emptiness in, in growing and deepening ways. There's no other place what Paul is saying then that this is going to come from this light and these kind of people. If they don't get it from us, they're not going to get it from this world where the days are evil. They're only going to come from the children of light. Because this world is so bad, we're to be good. We're to go shine Christ and be that light and show forth Him to a dark world. We are to be the light, the city set on a hill. And the people are going to see our good deeds and glorify our Father who is in heaven. The days are so evil and bad, it needs us. It needs us to redeem the time and to get into this world and shine the light of Jesus Christ by word and by deed. That's what this world is crying for. And Paul is saying, redeem the time and be those kind of people. The foolish were to walk in wisdom. And so guys, the days are bad. Let us do men good. Let us walk in wisdom and redeem the time that God has so graciously given to us. I have the answer to this world's chaos and brokenness, and it's Jesus Christ. What I've seen in the last five weeks in our studies, I have the answer. It was born into Bethlehem's manger and went to a cross and died in a seat at the right hand of God. I have this world's remedy that they're grasping for and stumbling in the darkness and they don't even know what they're stumbling over. I need to redeem this time to lift this up, to lift high the cross of Christ. Henry Martin's one of my favorite missionaries. Uh, He was in India. And at his funeral, they said this, he never wasted an hour He he never had all this squander. Americans just squander time. Our whole system is built on ways to squander time. Everything is built towards trying to get you to squander time. And Henry Martin finishes his life, and they said he never squandered an hour for the king. John Calvin was working on his deathbed, and someone said, stop. He said, what would you want the Lord to find me idle when he comes? Redeem today. For it's the only one that you know you have. Redeemed today. And so as I prayed about exhorting us and the use of our time in 2019, I came up with a list of where I wanted us to be faithful, just praying before God and what I've observed as a shepherd, what will help us grow. And and when I finished that list, I, I got this crazy idea. Why don't you stay in Ephesians and not take this beautiful verse out of its context and add whatever you want to it. Why don't you stay in its context and exhort everybody in that? Isn't that a great idea? So I like, I like that my list was Ephesians. I'm starting to think God's thoughts about life. That's good. So, uh, yeah. So I started at the beginning of Ephesians, and I went through it again, and I was blown away with what God was showing me. And I was so blessed to see that all, all these points were just a stroll through Ephesians that, that I, I don't have to stretch anything and get out a crowbar. It just fit beautifully. So here's my exhortation to this sweet flock that I love with all of my heart. I, I have such a love for you guys. And this is my, I just, I want this for me and for you guys in 2019. So I'm exhorting you, I'm exhorting you to what will make you happy a billion years from today. Okay, I don't care about what's going to just make you happy tomorrow. I want you to be happy for all of eternity. That's what I fight for and strive for as one of your shepherds. I want your joy, but I want it to be an eternal joy and that circumstance in the world cannot take away. So I want to see you and hug you and rejoice with you in the new heavens and the new earth and saying, aren't you glad that we fought for these things and never let go of them? So let's keep fighting for it, and the reward is going to be way greater than the cost. Promise. So let's look at the gospel. Here it goes. And I need to kind of go at somewhat of a rapid pace, because it it took me a year to preach these, and I need to do it in five minutes. So let's give her a try. If you'll flip over to chapter one. The first thing, as we start a new year, that I, I pray for that we will seek to be diligent in growing in is just simply the gospel. 
uh, simply the gospel, but, but not, the gospel is not simple. It, it's profound. And in verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Anything that God could communicate of His communicable attributes, He's given to us in Christ. He's withheld nothing. Every blessing that I can give to you, I've given to you in Christ. And so just begin again with realizing I, I, I have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That could be a cure to many battles that you've walked in here with this morning. Just set your mind again on that. Everything that God could give me, He gave me in Christ. And He, he set His love on me before the foundation of the world. Before God even created, He set His love upon me for nothing in me but only by His own good pleasure and His own uh, free choice I choose to set my love on this, this one. So it's a love that began in eternity past. It's a love, he says then, that, that sent my son into a world and he, he went up on a cross and he died and paid the redemption price so that you could be ransomed back to God. And then it's a love that my spirit is going to come and he's going to open your eyes to see the beauty of Christ. And he's going to take that stony heart and he's going to give you a new heart now that loves me and loves my will. And so the love of God is that he, he opens your eyes to see Christ as a treasure hidden in a field. And then his love, he says, is it's secured for eternity. Nothing, as, as you prayed this morning, nothing can separate us from that love. Be overwhelmed with that. Don't treat that like it's small. Okay, don't say, what's next? This year... Get so lost in that. I, 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 I have never exhausted this, and I never will. And I pray in 2019, we will just keep looking at this facet of the gospel from every angle and keep deepening and loving it and believing it. Believe it. Treasure the gospel. Let's labor together in it. We have to fight for this. We, we lose this, and we'll just become moral crusaders. We'll have a form of godliness and we'll deny its power and I'm terrified of that. I never want us to come and just do the externals. I want the power of God flowing in and through us for his name's sake. And so we've got to fight to stay in this gospel and not drift from it and not become moral nice people. We've got to keep fighting to stay in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and we commit as elders to keep putting him on display and, and teachers and Sunday school. All of us are devoted to just keep looking at this one. Let's fight for it. Let's fight together to help each other never get outside this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. So there's my New Year's resolution. Let's not get away from this beautiful, sweet gospel. Second, I want us to be devoted to good deeds. In Ephesians 2, he says we were dead, and when we were dead, God made us alive in Christ. And he comes to Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Your works are never going to get you merit or favor with God ever. But now that you're saved... We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. And that Greek word is we are God's poema. We're his poem. He is creating this beautiful poem of our lives to put on display his glory. And there are good works that he decreed before the foundation of the world for you so that you would walk in them. And I don't know why the church has to always divide up. Works can't save you, but if you don't have works, you're not saved. Just they're, they're married, they're beautiful. And so I want us to so love the gospel that we get it, that we are so engaged in good works out of the fullness and the freeness of what we found in the gospel. And so I don't want people just sitting around going, oh, all you gotta do is rest in your, the finished work and there's nothing more, that's a lie. That's true about justification, but it's not true about sanctification. And in 2 Peter 1, we're going to park on that for months. But I just want to be a group who are absolutely devoted to do men good, to truly enter into this world with this focus. I want to do men good. The gospel is what will do them good. But the, they need to see its power in me being different 
than the rest. I want to enter into this world and shine that light and show them and love them and bring truth. Be committed to that. Be devoted to good works and not sitting in your pajamas on the housetop waiting for Jesus to come back. I love this gospel, so I want to serve the gospel. I want to serve the king. I'm devoted to the good works that God has prepared for me to walk in them. It's my focus as I walk through my day. I want to redeem these days to do men good. I want to redeem every day that God has given me for good works, to love God and love other people. I want to be tired when I enter into glory, don't you? I like baggy eyes and black circles and hair falling out and all these good things. I want to be tired. Do you want to just kind of coast in, just kind of finish with a bunch of bullets left in your, what is it called, your pouch? I don't know what you call them. <coughs> I remember... In high school, we had this thing called the Farmer 5000. It was with, my, my high school was Wheat Ridge, and yet you ran this 5K, and at the end, all the people were there as you finished. And man, I, I loafed the whole thing. And then all of a sudden, at the end, everyone's cheering, man, and I came sprinting it in like a, like a war horse. And, you know, and, and then, as you stood there waiting to get your little number, I was dry heaving in front of everybody. I want to finish dry heaving. I... I do. I want to run for the king, and I don't want to finish and say, man, I, I so preserved every bit of my life that I could go for 30 more years. I want to finish like Paul, with just everything worn out and broken and just served for the king of kings. Okay? Quit storing up for 30 years from now. I don't want to come in with my little runner stroller. Have you ever seen those? having walked the whole race, going, wow, that was easier than I thought. I patiently and consistently stretched and served others to do them good all of my days. I want us to commit in 2019 to, to the good works that God prepared for you to walk in and not squander and let all these days run through your fingers with good intentions and maybe tomorrow just... I pray that God would stop that here this morning in every heart at Southside Bible. Third, and this is taking me longer than I thought. I got to get moving. Look at Ephesians 3.14. So because of this gospel, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up with all the fullness of God. So my third exhortation is I want us to be a people hungering and seeking to love Jesus Christ and to grow in it. As Nate preached, keep yourself in the love of Christ from Jude. I want to grow in him deeper. <clears throat> I remember 30 years ago, I went out on my first date with my wife, and I just remember looking across that pizza hut. Uh, I wore a white shirt, and I got sauce on it. it was, <laughs> it's not a good start. But I just remember I hardly knew her. And it was so exciting asking questions and learning and beginning this journey of just, boy, I, I barely knew this woman. And now as I look at her, tears flow because we're getting older. I get sore sleeping. And we're slowing down. And I'm just beginning to think more. And I'm beginning to see all that she did for me and for this family and for this church. Seeing young ladies sitting in my living room as she's pouring wisdom into them. And I just... And marveling and growing in my love that is just pure gold. And she is just a type of what Christ is to me. How, how much greater is his love? How much more now as I slow down and think on Christ? All that he's done for me in this journey. How he's molded and shaped me. How every trial was the right one. And he was such a good shepherd to restore my soul and to lead me into these green pastures. I just think on it. 
And I feel like Paul, if anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. Let him be condemned. This Christ is so beautiful. If you don't love him, just be anathema. That he's so worthy of our love and devotion and honor. And I, I, 2019, I want us to be a people growing in the depth of our love for this sweet one, the Lord Jesus Christ. If anything comes out of your time with 2019, may it be a deepening love to Jesus Christ. I love that hymn, more love to thee, O Christ. More love to thee, amen. amen. One man said, I would hate my soul if I found it not loving Jesus Christ. I just want to love him more. Fourth, body life. Verses 1 through 16, we get a therefore, and now we're going to transition from doctrine into practice. And Paul now is going to spend the longest section in his book on this section of what I want is the unity of the Spirit and the body of Christ so that we will build one another up into the head. And so here it is. Here's the gospel. Therefore, Paul, what are you going to exhort us in? I just expected something different. And the exhortation is you get yourself in this body. You be humble. You be forgiving of people who hurt you. You quit slandering. You forbear. And you get in in love. And we start. This, two years ago, I exhorted you to not forsake the assembling together as is the habit of some. Well, this year I want to exhort you beyond that. It's more than just assembling. It's assembling and doing Ephesians 4, 1 through 16, where you give yourself to this body. You engage in everything you can get a part of in community groups and discipleship groups. Engage and quit thinking, I came to church, I did what I'm supposed to do. Paul's saying, you got to get in and I'm going to give gifts to the body and you're going to be unified so that these gifts well, it says in verse 16, so that the body will cause the growth of the body. The way you're going to grow is by all the gifts in this body working together, they're going to build you up into the head. And so I, I'm crying out that I, first, I'm just so proud of so many of you because this year you dug into this body. We, we begged you, we exhorted you for your own good and the glory of God, and you're growing like crazy as a result of it. Community groups, plug into those. I can't exhort you enough, but that's the beginning. Titus 2 is older women pouring into younger women and older men into younger men. Get into discipleship relationships. And I've had the question, who should ask? The older or younger? Both. Just go ask, ask. Get in and know that the body causes the growth of the body. And what's starting to happen is we're getting a culture here of discipleship, but we, we got to go deeper. We need more. I want to see it continue. One of the great Puritans, Thomas Watson, wrote this quote in his book. Um, I forget the name of the book. I'll, I'll figure it out for next week. He said, good company quickens. It makes alive. Holy discourse and holy example of one saint wets and sharpens another. The saints never go so fast to heaven as when they go in company. You'll never go faster or better than when you go together, when you're sharpening and keeping each other in these commitments and, and the love of Christ and the gospel and serving. You will never go better or more successful than when we go together. I hope the Lord just comes back and we all get to go together. I love it. Keep giving yourselves to this body. Some of you, you're just being stubborn. And I'm going to tell you that that's not redeeming the time. This is what is redeeming the time is to give yourself to the body of Christ and to open up, be vulnerable, use your gifts, dig in. That's what it means to redeem the time. And to just come and walk away, you're not redeeming the time. And, and, and when you stand before God, you're going to see that that wasn't faithful. You hid your talent in the sand so I'm going to give you a strong exhortation because I love you. Engage in the body of Christ because the body causes the growth of the body. And it will hurt you. And Paul says, forbear and forgive, but stay in it. That excuse that someone hurt me so bad, I can't get in. It's not going to hold water when you stand before this king. I know you've been hurt. I've been, you know how many times I've been hurt? 
I don't even have any teeth left. I've, they've been kicked out so many times. But the love of Christ constrains me to stay engaged in this body because I'm growing from this body and they're teaching me how to trust and how to pray. And so I'm begging you for your good and the glory of God, give yourself to this body. Fight sin. For fifthly, I'm about out of time. Verse 17, chapter 4, 17, he flips it and turns it. I'm not going to have time to read it. <clears throat> but what Paul is saying there is start killing sin. Quit living in the darkness. Quit being immoral. Step out into the light and start living like children of light. The world is pressing in on us so hard to conform us to its image. And because the church has become lukewarm in so many ways, we're just becoming like the world. We're taking on the culture of the world versus us changing the culture around us. And this whole self thing, this self-focus and self-love is just growing in, in the church and it needs to die. Sex is so broken and twisted from the glory of how God designed it in covenant. And he's saying, start walking like children of light. Get in and be done with this immoral age. I'm tired of every Christian you meet who's getting married saying we're living together. Paul's saying that's foolish. That's squandering your days. It's a lie. Come out from your culture and start hating sin and fighting it and putting it to death and redeem the days that God has given to us. Quit getting sleepy and apathetic and being drawn into this culture and just acting like it's not sin anymore. Redeem the days. The, the edges are being rubbed off and we're playing with things that we would have run from decades ago. And as a result, we're no longer salty. What this world needs is to see a people walking and living and speaking as Jesus Christ did when he walked this earth. That we would make them love our Christ or hate us and want to destroy us. No in between. We're more concerned with showing the world that we can be just like them, but we believe in God. That is a bunch of garbage. Do you want to fight sin with all of your heart this year? Are you done making a truce with it? Quit petting it and being comfortable in it? Taking in its thoughts and its thinkings and its commercials and ads and promotions until we're numb. Anybody want to fight sin like you've never fought it before because of this gospel? What do you say in 2019 we lock shields and say let's fight sin and be vulnerable and say I want to get over some of these sins. Will someone help me? And start opening up. I watched some people overcome some lifetime sins this year that are unbelievable. And I'm just saying I, I'm tired of sin in my own life, and in yours. Let's get rid of it. Let's fight it together. Please. I was reading Romans 7, 13, and Paul said, Therefore, did that which is good, the law, become a cause of death for me? May it never be. Rather, the problem was sin. In order that it might be shown to be sin by affecting my death through that which is good, the law, that through the commandment, sin might become utterly sinful. And so the law comes and it shows a God who's redeemed you out of Egypt and he's saying, keep my commandments. Here's what I require of you. It makes sin just utterly sinful because it's against God who's loved me and gave his son for me. And so do you, do you want to get to the place where it's utterly sinful or do you want to pet it and keep acting like it's your friend? Sin is treason against the God who gave his son for us to redeem us. It should be utterly sinful to every one of our hearts here this morning. I hate it. Get rid of it. Mortify it. Put it to death. I'm going so long. Sorry, communion guys. I'm almost done. I'm going to do this so fast. Ephesians 3, 1 through 13, evangelism. The church exists to put on display this gospel to show the world. It's not safe nor right to spend your days ashamed of the gospel. You want to squander your days? Be ashamed of this gospel and hide and find ways to just spend all your days pointing at everybody, telling them where they're wrong, and don't go suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. To not be looking for inroads in any way possible to the church, 
through your day-to-day, starting new ministries, jumping in with organizations, sharing the gospel, the Saturday ministry that the guys go around uh, evangelizing, jump in with that. Put it in your day timers. (laughs) I'm going to go share the love of Jesus Christ for three hours. Put it in. And then prayer. (laughs) Ephesians 6. He lays out the armor of God and he just keeps saying with all prayer, with all petitions, be praying. Nothing happens without us. And humility, looking to and asking God in every help and advance and ability. We just, we ask God for everything. We just keep looking. I want prayer groups. I want prayer in your community groups, prayer here at church. Just pray, 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 and keep asking God to pour out blessing on our efforts of sowing this gospel to the nations. And then my last point uh, in Ephesians 5, 21 through 6, 4 is, is this year, he says that the wise one who redeems his time will be a husband who loves his wife like Christ loves his church. And a wife will be submissive and respect her husband. And children will honor and obey their parents. And parents won't exasperate their children because we'll live in this gospel and it will be uh, manifested in our home first and foremost and it will come out. And so I want this year, if that's not happening in your home, to say it's got to stop. And I'm going to seek help and I'm going to go after by being filled with the Spirit how to begin to have a home that will begin to look like this. And it's easy to get comfortable in uh, talking abusive with your speech, uh, manipulating your husband, talking back to your parents. It is easy to get into these places, and I'm telling you, that is not redeeming the days that God has given to you. And so I want us to, to strive for this beautiful structures in the homes that God has designed for his body to be, where it begins in there and moves out corporately. So I want to ask husbands this year, will you love your wives? Will you lay your lives down for these brides? And do everything you can to see them grow in Christ. And women, bring every gift you have to this family and the service of your husband and, and, and training and pointing these kids to Jesus Christ. And young moms and dads to not grow weary in disciplining and training and teaching in the word of God because that's the means that God has given to you. And so all of us to come together as a team and to help work and guide in this way. All right. Which list do you like better? I like that list. Yeah, that's a good list. So I feel like it's cheating, but it's all from Ephesians. So hallelujah. Guys, my, my prayer as we close then is let's not squander the days that God has given to us. Let, let's redeem them in this way for one reason, that God will get all the glory for what he's doing in the midst here at Southside Bible Church. And my conclusion is you have time this morning This is from the King James translation of Revelation 10.5. The angel said, which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which are therein that there should be time no longer. It's going to end. It's all time is going to stop and we're going to move into eternity forever. So while you have what's still called time today, I pray that we'll redeem them for the one who redeemed us by hanging on a cross in our place. Don't you want to give them everything? I sure do. And I want no bullets left. So come dry heave with your pastor this year. Let's run. Father, we come before you and we thank you. We thank you for this gospel. And I thank you for a new year. God, many areas that we didn't grow in, that we wanted, discouragement, failures. I pray we live in the gospel and we lay them down at the cross. And I pray now as we look to you, God, for enabling grace. If we just spent a year in our own strength, failing, thank you. And I pray that we learn the lesson now and we look to the spirit of God, the power that works within us through this gospel. And I pray for these commitments that we just looked at. I pray, God, that we would be faithful to them. I pray that you would enable us to do what we cannot do in our own strength. God, that you would meet this church in a beautiful way. And we will finish this year if you should grant us time, having redeemed the days that you have given to us. 
God, I thank you for this. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. The preceding message was presented by Southside Bible Church in Centennial, Colorado. And we hope you've been challenged and encouraged to grow in your relationship with Christ. Each week, our sermons are made available online and may be downloaded and distributed. If you have questions or comments or would like to speak to one of our pastors, please contact us through our website at southsidebible.org.